Greetings everyone. I was taking my dog for another walk and wanted to share some thoughts, which are really nothing overly profound, but just some thoughts and observations in general, beliefs about some things. It has to do with our disposition. I walk my dog with a retractable leash, as you can see here, and it extends out about a dozen feet. And I was walking when we first started off, and there was an elderly gentleman, and he was walking slowly and with a cane, and I saw him. I clearly saw him, and so I retracted the leash and remained a fair distance from him. But still, in his mind, he perceived it as somewhat of a threat that my dog was moving about with a certain amount of latitude. I knew he was coming. I stayed clear away from him and posed no threat whatsoever, but he said, hey, as he muttered a few things, you need to keep your dog close to you. I thought he was kidding and I looked into his face and he repeated it. You need to keep your dog close. And he was clearly agitated. He perceived what I was doing as somehow being a threat and a potential danger. I wouldn't doubt that he's fallen before, but clearly in my case, I was posing no threat. But there was this, again, this agitation this irritation and I would say overly concerned attitude about things. I worked in the nursing home for several years and I spent time working on an Alzheimer's unit and in years of ministry have worked fairly extensively with elderly folks, not exclusively but extensively. And through the years, you, you love people and you enjoy their company, but you also make observations. And if I was to make two general observations, you can take them for what they're worth. I would say this, in terms of men, men tend to move in the direction of agitation. Women, on the other hand, oftentimes move in the direction direction of anxiety agitation and anxiety I've already said that about the man and you know that oftentimes we find the cantankerous uh, cross patch the agitated older fellow and he grumbles about his health and he has oftentimes a good basis for it he's in pain a lot he's gone through surgeries and with that he has other concerns on his mind with family and finances and so many things and he becomes agitated and irritated with so many things and what he seems to perceive I think oftentimes like this man I ran across is what he seems to be seeing as obstacles rather than seeing a man come at him with a dog it was a threat and an obstacle you know the glass half empty men tend to bend in that direction to where things are problematic women on the other hand oftentimes and i'm talking about christian women as well and of course even Christian men, but Christian women are often prone to fretting and worrying excessively. Oftentimes they justify this as being a mother's way, a mother's love, a grandmother's concern, and it's almost as though this is our duty as females to worry. Of course, this flies right in the face of our Lord's teaching about anxiety. Repeatedly, he says over and over again, 
do not be anxious about your life. And yet, we feel again oftentimes, especially I think women, not exclusively of course, feel it's their responsibility to try to take on the problems of their children, their grandchildren, their relatives, their close friendships, as though they're going to do anything about it. They might say even out loud, I don't really have anything going on myself, but my kids, but this and but that. And it's our responsibility, that's what they're saying in essence, to worry about this, to, we say pray, but are you praying, are you trusting God? Or are you simply again fretting over this? This is foolish. And again, it's clearly not Christian. Where am I going with all of this? I'm going in the direction of realizing that this is the common propensity of us as we age to go in the direction of more and more anxiety and more and more agitation. Here's a simple suggestion. Don't do it. You are the key to your orientation. By the enabling of God, by the help of His Holy Spirit, you are the key and God expects us to trust Him. God expects us to see the good as well as the bad. God expects us to love and to pray, but not to micromanage and interfere. He expects us to be better people than that. Don't let yourself go into the default of becoming a miserable old person. It's up to you. That was one thing I noticed in the nursing home also, is you can have two different individuals that have the same essential problem. Oh, whatever it might be. I think of COPD. I saw several people with breathing problems and very limited because of it. And it's amazing to me how some with the same exact diagnosis seem to accept it and even be friendly and genial and cordial to people, while others became more and more upset and irritable. Again, you have to decide which one you're going to be. You are the key to your disposition and you are the key to your relationships. Quit looking at the other and seeing the problem as being with them. Certainly, people causes great aggravation, great grief, and we're concerned about those we care about to the point of even sometimes losing sleep, but don't give in to that. Your job is not to play God, and neither is mine, but to trust God. You're the key to your relationships. You're the key to your attitude. You're the key to who you want to be. Blessings to you.